You're listening to Answers from the Akashic Records, a world of empowerment service from Angel Rose and Ahanu. You are very, very welcome. I am Ahanu, and on behalf of Angel Rose, you are very welcome to this session of Answers from the Akashic Records. In this session, we're going to be asking questions like, is evil on its way out? Is there some way we can plug into people to share info to bring about heaven on earth? How do we merge realities? And how do we affect each other? In what way? And how do the master teachers of the past affect us now in the present? I remember that Angel Rose is not in a trance when she's doing this work and neither is she channeling through any spiritual or psychic entity spirit, angel or ascended master. She is downstepping this information and knowledge directly from source. You may not be aware of this, but many of the answers to these questions became the basis for Angel Rose's book called A Time of Change, which is available from atimeofchange.info. Her second book called The Nature of Reality can be ordered from thenatureofreality.info from amazon.com and from where good books are sold. And we also publish the summaries of these sessions, which we call Profundities. We post them online at worldofempowerment.com, allowing members from around the world to benefit from sources, words and guidance. And to date, we've collected thousands of hours of audio and transcripts from these sessions, which are all available in the archives at worldofempowerment.com. But also we have published the first 10 of the 100 book series of answers from the Akashic Records and they're all available from Amazon.com. Simply search for Angel Rose or Ahanu, A-H-O-N-U. And when we close this session today, please go to the World of Empowerment or Answers from the Akashic Records or indeed go to honesttogodseries.com and leave your comments about the podcasts, about what you're hearing and your experiences. So that's the end of the formal introductions. I'd like now to welcome our very own beloved Angel Rose, where we will continue with answering the question, is evil on its way out? And perhaps I might preface your answer here, Angel Rose, by telling a little bit of story, I think, where this question is coming from. Several years ago, we were in Ireland on the top of a mountain where there was an ancient Celtic queen buried there by the name of Queen Maeve. And while we were there meditating, You had a vision of seeing these old kings and queens and evil leaving into the astral. And it was a beautiful thing in that there was a sense that we are arriving at a place in our consciousness where evil was leaving. But now the question is arising again because of the situation in the world on this level of reality. So we need to know, is evil still on its way out? Well, Source wouldn't use those words this time. What it is saying is that, yes, it is leaving, but it is going to be the consciousness of the world that dissolves it. So let me explain that. It looks like there is a an upsurge in consciousness as we go through everything we've talked about tonight and we go through some of the struggles that were mentioned and we go through the some of the suffering that we're watching as well as we're coming to a head in terms of the inevitability of war. We're also coming to a head with people getting to the point where they're going to make the decision this is not the world they want to live in, okay? And as more and more people come to that, then we're going to see evil start to disintegrate. But it's going to be the collective choice of the world where they don't want any more pain. And they will actively make choices to prevent it. So with that, this is like the last hurrah for the evil that we see now. But we st- we still have a process, you see. And, and on one hand, it could happen in the next five minutes if everybody would do it. It doesn't have to take a long time. It's just that it's almost like the forces out there saying, well, how much can you take? How much more? How much more? Do you know? 
until we get to our breaking point where we insist on a different world. When that happens collectively across the board, then you're going to see these forces fall down. They're already starting to disintegrate now with all the exposure that's coming out. And that's part of the waking up process as well as people who have not realized the extent of the corruption are starting to see it everywhere now. So we are waking up to that level. Even my mother, who's so staunchly Catholic, has started to see some things. But she'll still defend the Catholic Church. I mean, still. But it's because her identity's caught up in it, you see. At least her eyes aren't closed entirely anymore. But that's when you'll see the whole house of cards collapse. It's already starting to collapse. And we're looking at a last run of the evil to try to maintain control. And they're doing it through vaccinations, through chemtrails, through food, through all sorts of things to to keep people asleep. You know, let me dull your brain. Let me change your DNA so you're, you're just not coherent anymore. I mean, all these things that they're doing is why food's so important too. And how many times have you heard of people who will make a reason why they won't buy organic? It's too expensive, you know, but really? Well, so you'd rather eat the stuff that's genetically modified and alters your intestines and alters your stomach and, (laughs) you know, you'd rather do that? Or all the electropollution in your house? How many times do you hear, don't have your cell phone in the room where you sleep? Turn off your modems at night, use cables instead of Wi-Fi, all kinds of reports, right? And people are still walking around with their cell phones in their pockets and their whatever. Don't get me started. Okay. But my point is, is this all comes down to a degree of how well do you love yourself? Loving yourself means that you make those different choices. You don't friggin' microwave your food. I mean, it changes the whole enzymatic activity in the food. It deadens your food. Why would you do that? So becoming conscious involves all of those things. So when we look at evil and forces there that are designed to make you go to sleep and make your children sterile and cause autism and do all kinds of stuff like that, you know, there's a point where you say enough is enough. So the more people who do that, and make the different choices for themselves. It's a day-to-day thing. What are you going to do in each moment? Every moment you have a choice. So evil is not, it's not a destiny for evil to continue. It's not God's will. But we're the ones that have to make heaven here. So on in a level, it's on its way out because we're watching the exposure. We're seeing it all come out, okay? But now it's... We have to pick up the momentum. It's like abuse. You got to say no to abuse at some point. You know, you can't make excuses on why you continually let yourself be abused. Oh, but there's such nice potential underneath the surface. No, there's not. (laughs) Abuse is abuse is abuse. No is the answer. Same thing here. It feels like we're going through a dark night of the soul. Is there some way that we can plug into people to share info to bring about heaven on earth? All right. Well, what I'm hearing is that the fact that people are living here now in this time period means that they did make a choice on some level to come in When they come in, when the potential for so much acceleration and enlightenment is evident. So having said that, source is basically saying it's really the same answer that everything you do that strengthens, it reaffirms everything we've been talking about. It just travels on those wavelengths through the whole web of humanity. And that's like when you say to yourself, too, when you think of your own growth, for example, and whether you went to a class or whether you heard something or whether you woke up in the middle of the night and you had some higher thought happen, well, how did that occur? It could occur either through your own guide sending it to you or through somebody else in the web 
who thought it or realized it, that it got passed down the wavelengths, okay? Let's take a quick little studio break here, and we'll be right back after this break. Don't go away. Years of research, thousands of profound statements, hundreds of sessions, miles of transcripts, months of listening, a vast archive of personal power and spiritual awareness awaits you. Join worldofempowerment.com today, a members-only website of practical spirituality for your fast-changing world. worldofempowerment.com Ahanu's book, The Reincarnation of Columbus, is his true story of the loss of his first child, his pain and struggle with grief, and the guilt that followed. It forms his entire philosophy of life and is a superb rendering of the unfolding of spiritual awareness. The reincarnation of Columbus is a true epic voyage from the pain and sorrow of a father's grief to a new world of empowerment, love, and forgiveness. Get your copy on Amazon.com or on Kindle for $2.99 by searching for A-H-O-N-U or visit http colon slash slash the reincarnation of Columbus dot com. That's all one word, the reincarnation of Columbus dot com. You are very welcome back. I am a Hanu. And just as a little reminder, before the break, we were asking the question, is evil leaving? And It was relating also to the question about heaven and earth and also how do we affect others? So the truth is, is that we all affect each other all the time, okay, with the quality of ourselves. So even going to a higher thing when, when, uh, okay, people like masters like Babaji appear and stay on the earth for a while. Why do they do that? They come to show you, well, look, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, here I am in a body. I just materialized myself in a cave and and I took myself out by dissolving in the river. And well, I can do it. And so I'm here to show you your potential. Why did Jesus do what he did? You know, he put it in the grids of the earth. He put ascension in the grids to make it available for everybody. But it doesn't magically mean everybody can now ascend. It means the potential is there. It's the same thing now. The more people who wake up, the more people who realize higher parts of themselves, the more we bridge the gap between our higher selves and our animal selves, the more we, we do that. And the more information that gets traveled around, it's available for people. And you just don't know what's going to wake somebody up. And a good example I have is is when I was divorcing from one of my husbands, the one that was abusive, <laughs> verbally and emotionally, not physically. But the one thing we always had was this sexual chemistry. And now I know there was some dark being implantation going on there, but it was a courting that I couldn't seem to break on my own. So he had moved out. And um, I remember saying to Jesus one day, you know, I how do I dissolve this. It's the only pull, right? How do I dissolve it? And I heard Jesus say to me, you have to bless him every day. And I remember thinking that, (laughs) you know, because I thought, so here's a good example of unconscious death. There's thinking. I was saying, thinking to myself, he doesn't deserve to be blessed every day. You know, look what an asshole he was to all of us. You know, he was horrible, right? If I bless him every day, he's going to end up happier than me. Why would I want to do that? Okay. But yet when you hear an answer like that, you know, it's the right answer because it's so loving and it's so up there. So I had to think about it for a few days. And so I started doing it. Anytime I had a thought of him, I just closed my eyes and said, I bless you. No agenda, right? Not that you're going to change. Well, it turns out that the next two women he dated after me, in fact, the next three, They were all churchgoers, and there's no way I was going to be a churchgoer, but he started going to church, and that was the thing he needed. He needed to go to church, so he kind of became a bit nicer, and now he married one of the women, and um, since then, he's actually 
called every one of my children and apologized to them. So he's he's changed, but it wouldn't have been through me with my metaphysical life I was living. It's not what he needed. But I'm making the point to say that you just never know what's going to wake somebody up. It could be religion, you know? But the point is, is that because I was sending him that blessing, it led him to the right place. And he freaked out a little bit in the area. But what I find comical about him was he always used to mock me. He used to mock me, call me wisdom of the ages, but it was a mock, right? And when he started having trouble with a couple of the girlfriends, he'd be on the phone. I don't care what you do. Use your magic. Just get her to come back. (laughs) Okay, but, uh, you know, I always told him, I'm not going to do anything to make her come back. If she's the right person, I'll say a prayer for you, you know. But I benefited from that in certain ways, that blessing, because all of a sudden he got promoted in his job. And I was getting these checks, you know, <laughs> well, what do you call them? Alimony checks that were eight, $10,000. And he would, the one thing I always say about him, he always honored that commitment, whatever the agreement was, but he got promoted and it benefited me and my children financially. So that's how I got blessed from it. But I did come to the place where I, I never, I under, cause Jesus also said to me then, do you really think I love him any less than you? I'm always going to give him another opportunity for love, just like I would you. That's all I do. And I I got it. I got it. And that's when my whole perception about judging other people started to disintegrate, you know. You just just can't do it. I mean, so even when we talk about going into those higher God-realized frequencies, you know, you have to get to a place where you really are harmless. Your intention is completely harmless towards anybody and everything. Did I answer your question? Okay. Yeah, one of the exercises we did in the chakra class, remember when we put ourselves in the web? Yeah. The big web. But the whole point is how I was seeing it was like pulses. The pulses would come towards you and your pulses would go out and it went through the whole entire web. So what Source would always say is tend to your own garden and the quality of, of yourself will naturally uplift the world. How do you make the dream kind trime reality in this reality, all one congruent thing. But you see, the dream time is a, is a particular vibration. It's a particular frequency. It's, it's much more whole, much more spiritual. So we have to choose it, you see. We have to always be choosing that in order to overcome these lower things. The only way they're going to dissolve is is we have to, first of all, not be judging them anymore. We have to be looking at the parts of ourselves that are like that still. And that's the unconscious death urge work, right? Where we, Course in Miracles would talk about our ego and say, the ego's out for murder. I mean, it would use that strong of a word. And I remember the first time I read it and went, wow, that's kind of a severe, but it's true. And it started showing me my own murderous thoughts. Holy shit, I thought, I really do have some, you know? And it has to do with what you project out towards other people or, you know, whatever. But the point is that's all subconscious work. And when that starts to dissolve, the other stuff just gradually disappears. So here's another story to make the point. I was traveling on a train one time. I don't know where I was going, but um, oh, I know back to uh, Rochester, New York to see a friend. And this guy comes in our car and he was a bully. He was like, said to this lady in a seat, get out of that seat. I want to sit there. And she, she just, she said, no, I'm not moving. So he starts to get physical with her and yeah, you can go sit here. You can pull her out of the thing. And everybody did not know how to react to this man. He was obviously very violent, big guy. And he's going up the aisles and said, you could sit here and you could sit here and you know, Hey, you move over. Hey, you get out of that chair. But when he goes by me and he goes, except for her, nobody touch her. You know, and it's like, well, what made him react to me that way? And it's not the first time that's happened, Uh but it it just makes the point, you know, that somehow, and and Carolyn Mace would tell stories too about how she'd be going to teach downtown Chicago in the middle of a riot and she kept driving through it and her thoughts were, were just peaceful and nobody touched her car. And that makes the point. Yeah. You got to be it. You see, 
when when you are it, it's it's just a, a radiation that you emit that has certain effects. So, and there's even stories too of um, some of these cops with these the standing rock thing. Remember that would literally, you know, became transformed by the experience and would refuse to hurt these people or do what they were supposed to do and. So stuff like that happens around the world too, you know. That brings us to the end of our session today. And as usual, we like to read to you the summary of what we've covered, which we call the profundities from this session. Evil is leaving, but it requires the mass consciousness of the world to dissolve it. As more people decide... This is not the kind of world I want to live in. Only then will we see the new world of Paradise Earth emerge. Exposure and disclosure is part of the awakening. Good food is an integral part of the question, how well do you love yourself? Becoming conscious requires us to recognise when enough is enough. It is not evil's destiny to continue on earth. The fact that you are here now means you did choose it. We all affect each other with the quality of ourselves. Masters show us our potential. The more people wake up, the more we bridge the gap between the perception of differences, polarities and realities. God source says, do you really think I love another less than I love you? A strong aura emits a protective shield. You can shift your geometry in an instant if you knew what part of you doesn't believe it. Self-worth and guilt and fear prevents us from manifesting our divine selves in this moment. DNA can be altered through altering our emotional state. There are no absolute laws of physics. Time and gravity are constructs of our minds. Gravity is collective karma. A master does not say yes to limiting thoughts. When we talk about impossibilities, It is because the collective perceives those limitations. God's will for you is perfect happiness. Anything else is a death-urged thought. On behalf of Angel Rose, I'd like to thank you for being with us today. Do make sure you tune in to our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher Radio and Google Voice. And you'll also find us on honesttogodseries.com and answers from the akashicrecords.com. Until next time, thanks, blessings, and bye-bye. You've been listening to Answers from the Akashic Records, a world of empowerment service from Angel Rose and Ahanu. To get the profound statements from the Akashic Records in your mailbox each week, log on to worldofempowerment.com.